Okay, thank you. We got there. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the meeting of Tamil Borough Council's Cabinet uh, on Thursday, the 1st of February. Um, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. We have apologies from Councillor Thompson and Councillor Oates. Anybody else? Um, second, declaration of interest. Any to declare? No. Number three, question time. I'm not aware of any questions from members of the public. So that takes us on to item four, matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedure rules. I don't know whether I need to declare for item five. I'm one of the businesses that signed up to the, the, to the Community Connector Scheme. Probably no. not, but no, I just wanted to mention it before we carried on. I think Chair just n noted in, in the minutes, but it's a, it's a report, it's more for information, so okay. uh, no uh, pecuniary interest there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, item four, so that's a report of the Chair of the Infrastructure, Safety and Growth Scrutiny Committee. So please come up and present your report. Thank you, Chair, for inviting me along to um, your Cabinet meeting tonight. Uh, this is to do with some a report that came to ISAG on the 17th of January 24 regarding the update on end, the council's response to ending plastic pollution. After receiving a very comprehensive report from the officers, and we were very impressed with the, the stuff that we received, we came up with a recommendation that we hope you'll feel you can um, take through so that is to look at the feasibility to do a trial to strategically site some dual use bins around the town with ongoing communications to explain and encourage the correct use we we understand that this is not something that can be done everywhere and we don't expect that because there are certain places where the bins are used at certain times of the day where people wouldn't be thinking about recycling. But we were hoping that they could be put in some places where people are in a different frame of mind and maybe looking to um, actually make use of different recycling. And we, we know it's um, all of us go to, um, to conferences and things, and every time you go to conferences, you see dual recycling bins around places. So it, it does work if it's placed right and if it's advertised. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Any comments? No? So I know the type of bins you refer to. Um, it's you know, surprised we haven't, haven't got more around the town centre, particularly around... Uh, let's say places takeaways and places like that where people are going to come out um, with the rubbish that can be split. Um, <clears throat> so is the cabinet happy to uh, vote on this? Yeah. Yeah. Just to clarify, um, are we essentially saying uh, the dual use is is plastic, and then everything else? Yes, that would be it. Uh, the, this came about because the, the officers said that everything they pick up around the town all goes into um, one thing and to landfill. So, you know, it would be remiss of us not to try and separate at least some of the stuff that can be recycled. Are you sure about that on the landfill? Because I thought it was mostly... Was it mostly... Oh, no. Sorry, um, the heat thing. Yeah, sorry, four ashes. Yeah, sorry. I think um, all I'd say is just um, uh, if this was obviously to be um, sort of uh, thought about trialling, then of course we need to make sure that the any any kind of maintenance of it is is not unduly costed too much. I suppose so. Yeah, just something to consider. <coughs> Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you, Chair. Are we just talking about the town centre as well, um, or are we are we speaking about around the whole? The entirety of the uh, borough. I, I think our um, recommendation is uh, is about a feasibility a trial. So we we would expect it to to start maybe in the town centre, and then we can see how it goes. I mean, it would be it may it may be remiss of us to buy bins for everywhere if it doesn't work at all. So it may be better to start small and then see how we can go. Councillor Summers. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I, I can get behind the feasibility of a trial. Um, 
My, my concern with these bins is, I mean, there's a public perception that they all go into the same container anyway for a start off, um, which is sad because, you know, that would um, that would defeat the object of it. We wouldn't do that just for that to happen. But um, what concerns me is um, we have to, at the moment, with the recycling scheme that we have, ensure that the product that we're sending off for recycling is good enough to be recycled. And of course, there's going to be a lot of contamination from people who just can't be bothered to put the right rubbish in the right places. So I could imagine it might actually cause more of an administrative burden for us, although it is sentiments entirely there. It's, you know, absolutely bang on to make sure we're recycling. Um, and I think, you know, a trial would would prove whether that was um, sufficient. Uh, unfortunately, I, I have a feeling that We'd be paying people to sort through the recycling before it went off to be recycled. That's my only concern about this, but you don't know until you try, I suppose. Um, that's the reason why it, they need to be strate strategically placed, because not everywhere will encourage people to do that. It won't have those people there who were willing to do it. And that's what I say about the time of the night, where they are, maybe outside chip shops and you know, McDonald's is not somewhere late at night where people are going to be thinking about recycling. But if it was the castle grounds with families where children are keen to do this, we could maybe look at it there. Was it comments? Yeah, um, Councillor Summers has just picked up on a couple of points, so I won't repeat them. I can see it working for when we have our events in the town centre. So. I've been to festivals and you, you've taken your plastic bottle in. So you come out and you put your plastic bottle into the plastic recycling. And then uh, most festivals won't allow you to take glass, but there is a glass recycle as well. So I could see it potentially working there. Um, and like Councillor Summers has said, you don't know till you try it. So it's where do we try it and how do we try it? Do we try it at an event or do we just try it in the town centre and see how it goes? But then if there's going to be cost implications for uh, for it having to be sorted before it can go to recycling, I, I don't know. I, I, I suppose we've just got to try it somewhere, even if it's small scale. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Just out of interest, um, after this, this trial, uh, how, would you, how would you measure its success? I think that would be about whether there was an issue with it of the contaminated loads if if the loads are such that we can send them to the right place then it's it's a success surely i suppose what i'm getting at is what would you see what would success look like to you that people are disposing of their goods in the right way surely that we're and that we're educating people that this is what you should do we we want people to do this at home but when they come into the town center we're telling them to chuck all their stuff into one bin and it doesn't matter about recycling when you're in the town but you've got to do it at home so it's a mixed message there isn't it and we we are on the cusp of doing some campaigning about um waste at home and how you you do do that so this would be a good time to do it really i think so I think um, all the points are valid, the concerns are valid. Um, but like we said, it's, it's, it's to try or something. If the trial goes well and, you know, we put criteria in to see what the success factors are and it's a success, then we're going to be recycling more in Tamworth than we do currently. If it's not a success, at least we can say we've tried and we're no worse off than we were. So, you know, I don't see it's a, a bad thing to, to trial it. And like, like uh, Councillor Clement said, it might be that you, you know, this we've talked about strategically t trialing them here. It might be an event is a place. You know, there's plenty of places we can we can look to try and get some good data. I know. I'm finishing first. <laughs> um, okay, Andrew Barrett, you want to come in? Yeah, th thank you, Chair. I think um, just for clarity, this would not affect our domestic recycling rate in any shape or form because it's it's obviously it's, it's street arisings, but it is a very important um, thing that to get people in into the manner of recycling um i think there is going to be various changes coming down the line with legislation i mean we, we spoke a while ago about food waste collection coming in in the next sort of 18 months or so there's likelihood that um something called the deposit rental scheme will come in which is around glass products um so the more we can do to help residents 
almost pre-sort their litter in inverted commas, um, the, 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 the easier it's going to be longer term for people to adjust. And, you know, I think uh, Council Dean said it, it's the right thing to do as well. It removes another product out of the, um, the, 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 the general waste which then reduces the impact on, um, uh, on the energy from waste plant, reduces the impact on the environment, and puts stuff back into the, into the circular economy. So it's a, sort of it's a win-win, a but location is absolutely key. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, do we have a move and a second or two? I want to come back in. Just, going to ask yeah. question. Just out of interest, do we have recycling facilities uh, in our council offices as well? So the Philip Dick Centre, I, I, I can't remember. I, I was going to go over there and put me put me bottle in the bin just to see. But uh. big big red bins, um, mixed recycling. Uh, businesses have to recycle their, their waste. So actually, we we are compliant, but we've been doing it for a long time because it's the right thing to do. And we are large producers of, um, or were large producers of non confidential paper, which used to go for recycling as well. Thank you. Yep. Um, it will also help um, our litter picking groups as well, because when we go litter picking, we try and separate the stuff that can be recycled, but then we're taking it home and putting it in our own bin. So if there is somewhere in the town centre that we can recycle and not have to carry it home, even better. Yeah, good Why point. did you put your hands in your ears then? <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. Um, do we have a move and a second and then to approve this for a trial? Yeah, moved. Seconded. All those in favour? Okay, thank you, Councillor Dean. Thank you. <clears throat> Welcome to stay, of course. Um, next item is the Business Community Connector Scheme. I hand over to the Portfolio Holder for Environmental Health and Community Partnerships, Councillor Summers. Thank you very much, Chair. So, um, this is a, a new initiative. It's been launched by Community Get Together CIC, that very productive uh, charity that we have, uh, we're lucky to have in Tamworth. Um, it recognises that businesses in Tamworth can have a positive impact on the people it comes into contact with because most of people's interactions are with businesses within Tamworth uh, throughout the day. And they can have an impact on uh, address, helping to address loneliness, isolation, uh, but they can also have a... Uh, another role in signposting people to essential support services and no doubt there are plenty of people who've gone into businesses who've asked for advice and where to go for th certain things and, and businesses don't know where to send them essentially so this is a very nice initiative that basically bridges that gap and, and lets people see uh, lets businesses have something to hand um, to allow them to signpost people to where they need to go um, it, it's it it's one of those that you'd call a, a no-brainer so um essentially and i'm not going to reinvent the wheel here because it's in the executive summary but i'm just going to say uh, just in case businesses are listening and they haven't signed up to it yet if you uh, are a business who sign up to the scheme you receive a 20 minute signposting training video it can be shown at a team meeting or watched by team members in their own time you get window sticker large or medium to let you know that the customers know the part of the scheme uh, to raise awareness, a directory of local services, which is in the appendices, um, appendices even, and uh, they, those are the businesses, uh, sorry, schemes or services that they can be, uh, people can be signposted to, and it's going to be updated every quarter by Community Together CIC, uh, and uh, Community Together CIC will actively promote the businesses that sign up to it as well. So, uh, and as you can see. Um, that there's a lot of information within the uh, within the pack, and we've already had uh, many businesses sign up for the scheme, um, including cafes, pubs, hairdressers, barbers, retail outlets, leisure facilities, and gyms, and even our own council of Clements's business has signed up to it as well. So um, I don't think there's anything more to add other than uh, you know it's not going to cost us anything. The community together CIC of the data controller. Um, it's like I say a no-brainer. It's a brilliant initiative. Um, it bridges a gap that we we we, uh, we need to fill, um, and businesses have probably been crying out for for years. Um, so uh, I, I would like to move the recommendations in the report, Joe. I don't know whether you wanted to add anything, Joe, at all to it. No, all good. 
Um, yeah, I totally agree. No brainer, no cost to the council, bridges the gap. Um, Councillor Smith wanted to come in. Yeah, this is um, this is fantastic. So um, well done, CIC and uh, everybody involved. Uh, just one uh, concern I was going to mention. Not really a concern, but something to point out. So we're saying the data controller is the um, is CIC, isn't it? And obviously we're dealing with um, you know other partners. We're, we're dealing with uh, private businesses. Have we definitely got this whole issue with data, which I think is you know in the years to come are going to become more more and more of a pertinent issue. Have we definitely got that all in alignment? It's all, you know, lawful and all the rest of it, as far as you're aware. I mean, obviously this has gone, th you know, I've gone through our uh, uh, monitoring officer on that perspective, but yeah, the data itself is, 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 is organisations with their publicly accessible data, their publicly ac accessible phone numbers, websites. So it's not personal information. Um, and obviously, working with CTCIC as we do anyway, um, we will always check and look certainly where we've got some of our entries in there. So there's no issues from that point of view. They will maintain it and come, you know, actually work with the businesses, organisations and ourselves and our, our organisations. So basically, you know, from this, we've, we have there a cohesive list of Tamworth organizations to support the vulnerable people of Tamworth which is obviously one of our priorities so that we can actually use that ourselves for yourselves as councillors for our own staff in one place so yeah we have checked checked on that that basis happy then yep anyone else or should we move to uh we can have a second then yep councillor cooper all those in favor Thank you very much. Well done. Um, and the final item, councillor and community grants review. Again, councillor Summers, please. Thank you very much, Chair. So uh, this is something I've been going on about for a number of months because I've been quite excited about it. So um, uh, essentially, as people know, we, we have um, a fair bit of cash um, to give out to community groups and organisations in Tamworth. Um, and we have a number of different ways of doing it, uh, some of them not so successful as others. Uh, we have the Community Grant Scheme, which uh, is £18,590 per annum, and that's our usual route to getting a grant. Uh, we've also got various pots of money, like the Festive Grant Scheme, Councillor Community Grants and Festive Grants, that we as councillors can uh, have people apply to us for to release the money. And they're not so successful, um, and they're not very well utilised. And... Um, I'm sad to say sometimes uh, the funds don't always get spent and the, the word awareness around it isn't as well uh, uh, isn't as, it isn't as well publicized as I, I'd have liked so um, essentially I, I, I've said that we, we need to simplify this and we need to give councillors the power to give more money to their communities and feel that it's a reasonable amount of money for them you know, to, to feel like they're making a difference within their communities and be able to fund things that are perhaps more than the limits currently allow. Um, there's a lot more detail in the report, but essentially it boils down to um, each councillor uh, having amalgamated funds to make up a £1,000 per councillor uh, to be able to, to give those to community groups via the already existing methods um, we, we, um, we have available for, for community groups to apply. So, yeah, there's still going to be requirements on that funding. Councillors can't just say, here's, here's some cash. But um, there's still going to be an appropriate means of getting access to it. But uh, it's, it's giving councillors much more money to, to put into their communities in a, in a much more simple uh, way, um, hopefully with the aim of making sure all of that money is spent um, where it should be and not left over. Um, there have been funds where councillors have... have uh, moved on to, you know, saved it up essentially. Um, I don't think it's going. It's not going to affect that um, in any way uh, because councillors have already made kind of those commitments. But uh, for the next budget cycle, we're going to uh, be essentially doing away with the schemes as detailed in the report that weren't particularly well um, utilised. Um, and, and as I say, giving councillors that uh, that extra cash to to spend in their wards. Um, although I must say it doesn't have to be their ward, um, but 
you know, it's like more, more than likely to be, isn't it? So, um, I mean, there's uh, several recommendations in the report, too many to go through, uh, to be quite honest with you. Um, but, um, I mean, I'd like to, to move the recommendations, obviously look for a seconder at some point, but uh, happy to take questions. And uh, I don't know whether you wanted to add anything to that, Joe. No, I think you, you'll see within the report as well that by we, we, we've um, the recommendation is that we we use um, the Staffordshire Community Foundation to manage our grant scheme. That certainly the, 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 and that will allow us to have a wider opportunity to understand what the Staffordshire Community Foundation do in Staffordshire, uh, looking at other funds that they hold um, and, and manage it with a, with a cost saving at the moment to the council as well. Uh, and they are perfectly um, willing and, um, to, to put those grants together, do the reports for us, and then actually bring them to the Nominations and Grants Committee for approval and sign-off. So that, that's another advantage to us at this point in time, while I have a member of staff on secondment. Uh, obviously, that will be for that year, and we'll evaluate that service and see moving forward. It will allow us also to review any other options for social funding in Tamworth, which could be um, through the Wheel of Tamworth Fund that, that Staffordshire Community Foundation run, and also options for maybe social crowdfunding platforms. Uh, but that will come over the next year on a review as to how that might work for us in Tamworth and whether that is an advantage for our grant funding. So that, that's where we are with that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. Yeah, it seems seems to make sense. I've always thought this is a this is a good idea. Just out of interest, I mean, is there any sort of administrative uh, or resource savings as a as a result of this? You'll see, see that in that one of the, uh, the the resource things that actually just by using it through, obviously having everything in one place, it's managed in a coherent way um, through one form through one policy. Um, and obviously the, the, the savings at this point in time by using Staffordshire Foundation um, is about £20,000 for this year just on that administrative process. You know, the, the staff, of, of, of whilst obviously they're very willing and happy to do things, it does provide some of the, the current process is quite administratively long. Um, putting them in one place, in one bucket, as it were, and allowing Staffordshire Foundation, who are experts at grant funding with all their um, resources, to do this at the moment for us as a pilot. And hopefully, say, that will allow us over the next year to explore other options. <clears throat> we'll say that might not, that may be savings, but it may also be some advantages again to the most vulnerable in the community and the, in the voluntary sector. Yeah, just to, just to come back and just comment, really. I mean, that's what we're all about, isn't it? Anything that's going to streamline any anything, really. Um, absolutely, that's what we're all part of uh, wanting to do. Yep, I mean, there's little not to like, right? It's, uh, it's streamlining a process, saves on cost, and puts more control uh, in the hands of those who know their, their boards and constituents. I think that's a, definitely a positive thing. Um, I did have one question. I don't want to sound like I'm going into a negative here, but I just wanted to question the um, the community grant scheme will reduce by three thousand pounds per year, but didn't say why. Is that just to make it an easy to round to one thousand pounds each? Where where does that come from? That that was the, the sort of compromise that we had to make at this point to actually give every every councillor that one thousand pounds. So it is a slight reduction on there, but there are some retained funds that we've used across the the years for some funding, and what we've proposed there is any retained funds. If we do not manage to spend that 15,590 over the next year, that can be, if it's over 5,000 pound or anything that doesn't get underspent can be retained. And that can be then used moving forward for other grants or things that make the councillors want to um, look to use for community groups. Um, and, and obviously working with Staffordshire Community Foundation, hopefully through their grant project, we may be able to actually enhance what we can offer. Um, they offer, grants and then also actively engage businesses to encourage them to sort of promote community groups so that that may well enhance that pot thank you Councillor Summers. thank you yeah um and to be quite honest with you i mean um given that you know the county council give was it five thousand pounds per councillor two and a half. Two and a half. Oh, maybe a bit ambitious there um but i would like to see it increased as the years go forward because i, I think there's no better person to decide how money is spent in their ward than the ward councillor um i've always felt that councillors weren't empowered enough 
in, within their ward to do something of any consequence in terms of financial. In, in it, it, let's face it, quite often it comes down to the money at the end of it. In, mo in a lot of cases, you can give time and support, but often organisations are screaming out for money. Um, and, and, you know, £300 just doesn't cut it sometimes. So, you know, this is about empowering councillors to, to actually be able to give back to their communities. Yeah, totally agree. And if we can see that there's a recurring saving of 20,000 or so each year, there might be an argument then to say, well, it goes up to 1,500 or 1,250 or something in future years. Um, but for anyone that doesn't know, Council Summers has been really passionate about this. And uh, I know um, he's, uh, he's brought it to this point, so well done. And thank you to everyone involved. Any other comments before we go to a vote? I know we need a second vote. I'd just like to thank Jo for getting all of this together. She has worked very hard on this and getting this report together and uh, making my wish come true. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's in a public meeting. That's on record now. <laughs> come on. Uh, I was just going to say, Chair, um, I'll, I'll second it uh, if you have to second her. So it's a fantastic initiative. Thank you. Brilliant. All those in favour? Right, well done. Thank you very much. Um, and that brings us to the end of the meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone that's watched online, and uh, see you soon.